Hello everyone and welcome to week three where we're going to start by talking about assessments uh, with regard to collaboration and group work. I know that that's one of the hot topics we've been discussing throughout the course so far um, and so just kind of wanted to take this week to focus on what do assessments look like in a collaborative uh, classroom and during group work. Take a minute to look at the picture below. What do you think this is saying regarding collaboration and group work assessments? Maybe this is how your students feel when it comes to assessments with regard to group work. How can you as a teacher try to be fair when assessing students in group work and collaborative assignments? That's what we're going to take a look at in this short tutorial. Today we're going to understand the difference between formative and summative assessments. Just a brief review. Understand the difference between assessing products and process in group work assignments. And then identify some strategies for formatively and summatively assessing both group work products and the group work process. Let's begin. Formative versus summative. All of us have used these terms in the past and all of us have implemented both formative and summative assessments in our classrooms. Let's just take a minute to define them and clarify when you use formative assessments versus when you use summative assessments. One, formative assessment is the ongoing observations and methods of evaluation designed to measure student comprehension or task. This will help the teacher know um, when to enhance or adapt instruction. It emphasizes mastery of classroom content instead of earning grades or test scores. Many times we can count these formative assessments for small points in order to incentivize students to do well on them, but they shouldn't have a, a huge weight on uh, the course outcome. It's conducted throughout the entire instructional process to gauge students' progress. It's to help both the teacher and the student know where the students are so that teachers can adapt and modify lessons to get them where we want them to be. So formative assessment is assessment for learning, to learn where our students are at. Summative assessment is evaluation administered at the end of a unit of instruction, whether that's a week or two weeks or three weeks or after a long time, after students have been working on and gaining knowledge and information for a period of time. It comprehensively assesses student learning and the, effect the effectiveness of an instructional method or program. This is assessment of learning. So those are the two key ideas here. Formative assessment is assessment for learning. Summative assessment is assessment of learning. Let's take a look at how this can apply to um, assessments in group work. First, we have to understand that when assessing group work, there are two things you should be assessing, ideally, is the process and the product. So we do group work, why? To have our students learn good teamwork skills. We want them to be able to accomplish something as a collective. And so we need to have them really appreciate and value that process. So we should be assessing that process and hopefully they're getting better throughout the school year at being good team members. So when you assess the process, what are you looking at? How students work. So are they able to generate ideas? listen respectfully to each other and compromise, distribute the work fairly. This can be done by completing their roles. So if they have roles that you've assigned them and they've done their job accordingly, being able to resolve differences without necessarily involving the teacher or having to sit on opposite sides of the room or change group members and being able to communicate effectively. All of these things you can assess in a variety of ways, which we'll talk about momentarily. Assessing the product is assessing what students complete. So that final task or item or artifact that they submit or present to you and the class. Criteria for assessing products can include the quality of the product. So is it creative? Um, did they complete all aspects of it? Is it clean? Is it neat? Is it attractive? Is it engaging? Anything uh, like that you can include. Does it meet the course objectives? So did they have the definitions and the vocabulary needed um, 
And did they complete all the different tasks that you asked them to related to the content? And perhaps if they're presenting the material, did they present it adequately enough and clearly enough for their classmates to understand? So we're going to take a look at how you can formatively and summatively assess both the process and the product of group work. Some examples. For formative assessment, when you are assessing the process, you could include exit tickets and self-peer surveys, daily or regular one-on-one -on -one check-ins, informal walkthroughs and observations, or daily regular student reflections. Remember, these don't have to be graded, but if you feel that students need an incentive, then perhaps provide a, short, a small amount of points, 5, 10 points, or 5%, or 8%, or 10% of the grade um, as they complete these formative assessments in the class. And we'll take a look at some peer surveys and exit tickets um, that perhaps you could implement and use as a part of the formative assessment strategy for the process of the group work. When it comes to the product, if students are working on a long-term product, a long-term project or group work assignment, it's really good to have small formative assessments throughout the process to ensure that the product is progressing as you need it to and as they need it to to get where they need to be and that the students are not procrastinating and so that you're ensure that they're not falling behind. The way that you can do this is by scheduling, um, creating a schedule that has regular deadlines or goal markers. By Tuesday, everyone needs to have achieved X, Y, and Z. By Thursday, everyone should be here. Creating small group check-ins with a checklist, so going by every two or three days with the student groups and having a checklist of what they should have done and checking it off yes, no, or why, or what they still need to work on. Having students submit individual uh, pieces of work to you that you grade, maybe based on their roles or based on their given tasks. And or creating an individual or group summary or log of goals and tasks completed. So this could be a short form or a short Google form or document that students complete or write out and say, this is what I did today, this is what I accomplished, and they turn it in and they can log it daily or weekly. For summative for the process uh, assessment, um, you can have a teacher evaluation or rubric, this is pretty standard, um, a peer and self-evaluation rubric that they, either they create or that um, you create and have them review it, or a student reflect it, reflection essay. This is a good way to have students really process their participation and their effort in um, the process of group work. And for the product, again, a teacher-generated rubric or assessment, and then peer and student evaluations. And you'll see later on in this unit how peer and student evaluations can work effectively if implemented correctly early on. Now let's take a look at some visual examples of both formative and summative process and product assessments. Here is a quick peer evaluation form. This document is pulled from one of the resources in Unit 2. Here, students are able to rate themselves and put in the names of their group members and rate them on a one to five scale. Again, it's up to you if you decide that you want to make it anonymous or if you want to allow students to um, freely vocalize and share uh, their thoughts on their partners. It can be anonymous in the sense that they just turn it into you and the other group mates, of course, don't see it. This is a process formative assessment and it is quantitative because students are using a one to five scale. So they're grading, in a sense, their classmates. Here's another peer evaluation form that's a little bit more detailed. So it might be for your higher level students or if you really want them to dig deeper. It's still a process, but it's a summative form. So this happens at the end of the group work. The other one happened during the group work. This happens at the end. It's a little more comprehensive. And again, it is quantitative because students are rating themselves one to four in this case. And you can see some of the attributes, dependable, helped others when work needed, did work accurately, contributed a fair share to weekly papers, etc. And all of these items you'll definitely want to go over with students and explain what they mean um, so that they rate themselves fairly and rate each other fairly. Cooperative learning self-evaluation, this is one uh, that is summative and it is qualitative because students are reflecting on their process throughout the project. Um, and this is a summative, this happens at the end, but you could also modify this so that it happens throughout the process um, and it can be formative. Now this second uh, 
example, set of examples I'm going to show you is based on one uh, poetry interpretation unit that I did when I was teaching theater at the middle school level. The first two rubrics that you see here are for the product. Students were placed in groups and asked to memorize and perform a short poem um, as a group. Throughout the process, I found ways to formatively assess their individual um, contributions and their individual effort because each student had lines that they had to memorize. So I created a memorization rubric and assessed each student individually um, just on memorization. And then at another point, we worked on characterization and movement, vocal expression and movement, blocking and vocal expression. And I watched their scenes, I watched their poetry interpretation scenes, and I also assessed them on their blocking and vocal expression. So this was formative assessment throughout the process um, as they work towards the final product. And it is quantitative because it is a one to four scale here and a one to five scale below. Again, I did give points on this formative assessment because it served as an incentive for students to know kind of where they were to where they needed to be. So if they only had 20 to 45 percent of their lines memorized, they knew they had to work on that particular skill, that particular area, and they could use their group members to help memorize those lines. Same thing with blocking. If they only knew 10 to 20 percent or 20 to 50 percent of their blocking, they knew they had to go back and rehearse that scene as a group together or better and get that person on task or get those people sort of refocused and back on task. So then the final summative rubric that I used for this same unit again was quantitative and I included many of the areas that you saw in the formative assessments and also had a few other areas. So I looked at projection and articulation aside from vocal expression um, concentration and collaboration, so working well on stage with their teammates, and performance etiquette. So not only were they responsible for what they were doing on stage, but they were asked to be good audience members when they were off stage. So these are just some of the examples um, of both process and product, summative and formative evaluations and assessments, uh, both quantitative and qualitative, to give you some ideas of how you can begin to assess group work and collaboration in the classroom. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or post them in the news forum um, as we go throughout this unit on assessing collaboration and group work. Thanks for listening. Please go ahead and move forward with the rest of this week's material.